So today we're going to be taking a look at IPFS JS. So if you don't know what IPFS is, I will link a few videos down below, which I would highly recommend to watch if you don't know what this is. It is a quite complicated topic. So uh, please excuse me if I make some mistakes and please correct me down in the comments because I just don't know a whole lot about it. But I want to show what I know because I think it's a really, really cool concept and it might actually be the new way the internet is structured. So let's get right into the code. Okay, so I'm just stopping the video quickly. I'm just editing it and I think there's a few things I want to clarify. What we're currently working on right now is the JavaScript implementation of IPFS. Now there's also a Go implementation and there is the command line and there's the desktop there's a cluster and there is a browser extension. So the one we're currently working on is like I said, the JavaScript implementation. And they're all pretty much pretty similar except the cluster one, but all of these here are pretty much the same thing, but with a different layer on top. Well, not quite, but um, I guess it's the easiest way of thinking about it. So if you have the JavaScript implementation, you can modify the gateway through JavaScript. If you have the Go implementation, you can modify the gateway way through Go. If you have the browser, you can modify it through a website. And if you have the desktop application, then you can modify it through a desktop application. And if you have the command line, you can modify the gateway through the command line. So I think that is the easiest way of thinking about it. But let's get back to the video. Okay, so in the code is an instantly instantiated function because all of this is asynchronous. This line here just creates the gateway and spins it up and makes it ready to run. And then we just show a message that it is started. Now there's two different ways of adding files. So one is adding them through an array like this or just an object. And there's a few different properties and I will leave a lot of links down below, which you should definitely check where they will go in more details of some of these things. Uh, information at this point is very scattered and there's a lot of small pieces, a lot of different places. And even their own documentation does not really correspond with the actual current version of the library. So you can't really use any of their examples. But you have a path, which is the path from the root folder. And then you have the content, which is either a string or a buffer. So this, so we could load a file in from something like fs but in this case we're just defining it as a string and we are making this basic html website so i've been running this a few times before so before we get too far into it i will just increase this number because i have some older versions but you would just add the html you could either load it from a file or just put it in like this the way we actually add this code to the network is like this so it might seem a bit odd to use a full loop to actually add it, but it's because we have to get the return. And this function here returns a generator and we're essentially looping through that. So we get the result and then we just do this dot string and we will get the hash for that file. So let's try to run this here and see what we'll get. Okay, so you can see we get this file. So this is just like a, a normal uh, hash. So we can just go in here and of course, we need to prefix it with something, but you can see that this should sync and you can see it synced pretty quickly. And their Cloudflare has one which works the exact same way. There's not going to be any difference. But anyways, you get the point. It is here. It's a file. It's on IPFS and it works like any other hash. But let's actually try to get this file. Now, you probably wouldn't get this in the same file. So you would probably have this in a different JS application. So if we just update our token here and we run our application. And another thing I want to mention is the reason why there's two here. The first one is the file and the other one is the directory that the file is in. And you pretty much you should only use the first one unless you want to share the, the directory. But let's try running the application. So you can see that we got the HTML and this is the HTML of that cached file. Now you might say, well, this is pretty complicated just for getting one file and I think it is as well. And I was playing around, I was, you know, it, it, it's a weird format, the output of this function here. And I found out that they are using generator functions, but this is a one liner for you in case you want a one liner, else just Google generator functions and read up on them. And maybe you can find a better way of doing this. And if you do, please comment down below so everybody can be aware of that better way of doing it.
Yeah, now, this is only the very basics, and I haven't really gotten too much into it myself, but if you want more videos in the future on this, because I think it's a really, really interesting decentralized web, then I would be really open to make more videos if you guys want more videos. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here, and hopefully I see you in the next one.